sometimes seeing too much in security can actually make it a lot harder for like everything that you do. It, uh, working in network security or working as a network engineer most of my career um, and dealing with the security things you have to deal with, it's, you always want to know all of the things. You think more dashboards and more stuff on the screen and I'll feel like I'm doing good, but then you start to realize very quickly, it's not just that it's information overload, where do you even get started? So I guess my question for the two of you is, where do you get started? <laughs> yeah, that, that's right, Jeff. I mean, I, I think a network engineer of all people can appreciate that the most. Looking at a firewall log or some sort of dumped network you know, capture, it can be overwhelming. Now take that and multiply it by multiple networks, multiple devices, yeah. multiple sets of user log data, and we find ourselves really, really overwhelmed, but we need all of that data. Even if we're trying to find the needle in the haystack or we're trying to look at a certain amount of data that actually at the end of the day, we would almost deem dirty. Like most of it's gonna come in and have more data than you need, but we need to really weed that out and understand what's happening. And I think what we've seen mostly is your tools need to help you put that together. It's not even so much about how little or how much data. The more data you have, the more context you have to actually contextualize what happened in your environment, but putting it together with that contextualization in a meaningful way to say, Jeff, actually what happened is you had a conversation with Chris and Brianna today, not you had a conversation with Brianna yesterday and a conversation with Chris the day before is where it matters. Yeah. And then Chris, the last thing we've seen around that is it's great to contextualize it. Most important first step, but if I can't give somebody the ability to respond to it, not doing much, right? No, exactly. <laughs> so sometimes, what you mentioned, sometimes you see too much, but even if you see the actual uh, relevant information on one spot, if you're not able to respond to a security incident, then you're still quite powerless, uh, yeah. basically. So uh, yeah, with Cisco XDR, we're really trying to bring all of those things together, uh, where we both only take the relevant information only show that to a security analyst or an incident responder, and then at the same time provide rich response capabilities, which you could potentially automate, uh, but that is obviously up to each, each customer. Yeah, because um, I could run the risk of showing you too many responses too, right? Exactly. So again, what yeah. you're contextualizing yeah. and then the information you're giving to follow up on it has to be really meaningful. It, you triggered a thought, and I really love the, the word context in this case, uh, because it reminds me of just general human communication. When we when we hear something, but we don't understand the context behind it, it's really easy to make a, to respond or make a decision based off of that that completely misses the mark. Because yeah. if you don't understand why a person said something or a group of people, and it sounds like what you're describing is very much that, that we've had all kinds of security tools forever, and we still have all of them, just like we have network monitoring tools and everything else. But having all that information doesn't necessarily help you make the decision or the response, as you, the word you were using. So, what is the concept of XDR, it, like for Cisco, but in general, how does that, how does XDR help us in ways that we haven't had before? Talk yeah. about guided responses. Yeah, so, so I guess um, people have been trying this for years, right? Collecting all the data, and then with all, I mean, they're literally trying to ingest everything in a giant data dump, uh, as they sometimes call it. With XDR, we're really trying to pull in detections that's extended detections from all kinds of sources. So meaning endpoint, network, identity, uh, risk-based solutions as well, like vulnerability uh, managers. And then what we're gonna do is uh, do uh, analytics and correlation on top of that. And if we can confirm a single detection with context or other detections and tie those together, we can create an incident, is what we call it in Cisco XDR. And not only is, uh, is what we do is create an incident, but we'll also give it a priority score based on the, that context. How severe an attack is, how valuable an asset is, which was attacked. And, and finally, what we'll do is we'll provide bite-sized response actions, which will be tailored to the type of incident. Um, and, and that's where a lot of automation capabilities come in. So we'll provide a lot of pre-built workflows, as we call them, or response actions, but we're building that content on top of an, uh, of an automation tool, which customers can also use themselves if they have some corner case uh, response action that they need, they could potentially build it themselves, but the strategy is to provide as much out of the box, basically, 
It's a really interesting way to think about it too, because you know, here in the DevNet zone at Cisco Live, our, the, 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 the through line for everything that we do here is all around automation, mm -hmm. automating yep. things um, to make complex a little bit simpler. And it's, we've always had the ability through security tools and other, other platforms to call APIs or invoke an SDK if need be, wherever it, whatever it happens to be, to interact or engage with the automation we already have as a company. But I find that kind of interesting that, that w through Cisco XDR, we're actually giving more, we're actually almost abstracting away a little bit more of the automation to say, we're going to make this automation even simpler for you. You can still b connect into your own existing processes, sort of like, hey, I have my own CICD pipeline, I want to connect your stuff into my pipeline, but this sounds like almost owning a little bit more of that in the platform to make it simpler for somebody to orchestrate. Yeah. Yep. That's right, that's exactly right. We don't feel that you should have to figure that out anymore. And it doesn't mean that the concept of what DevNet does goes away. Uh, we would actually tend to say, your adversaries are automating things, so you should put yourself on the same playing field. But that requires yeah. <laughs> the context that Chris right. mentions. We would never recommend that somebody automate something that is in a, a very impactful part of their business mm -hmm. if they don't feel comfortable doing so. But if we have that context of that asset value, the user involved, Jeff's involved, not Brianna and Chris, so this is way more yeah. important, lock it down right away, or don't because we could break something really big, that context is really important. Yeah, it's such a fair point because every organization no matter what they do, what the culture of every company, the people that work there, the outputs and the products that they make, their their problems to, to be solved are going to look completely different than the building right next door. Like no matter what, they could be in the same industry, but the problems they're dealing with are going to be different from the other company. So having the ability to automatically automate some of that, but also give them the flexibility to say, you know what, that's not something we want to deal with here, but we do want to deal, we do want to handle this automation. I, I think that's a really good thing, a really yeah. good approach because it lets companies be as uh, uh, like be as prescriptive about what they want the tool to do for them and what they want to be able to do. And maybe one last thought on that, like even just passive. We think of action consistently as actively doing something because it has the concept of act in it. Yeah. But when you're orchestrating an action, it can be a passive action like go ask Jeff what he had for breakfast. It doesn't mean that I'm going to force you to change that or force food down your throat, right? Yeah. But I could run a query mm -hmm. that will not necessarily impact anything in an automated fashion to put that information together to make it meaningful for that's someone. Fantastic. Yeah, that, that's, that's indeed a great point. People often think when you're automating response actions in security that you're immediately quarantining devices and they get they see all kinds of horror situations <laughs> where they're accidentally quarantining their factory devices. It doesn't have to be that way. You can automate whatever you want and getting extra info is also automation. So yeah, that's a great point. Solve the problems that you have, not necessarily what somebody else decided. Yep. Exactly. Thank you both so much, really appreciate it. Thanks, Thank Jeff. Thank you.